at no point in time do you define who you are with what you do. I feel the 20 years have been a breeze in that sense. So sports to me has been a big influence. Greatness to me is about helping somebody else achieve much more than what they believe is their potential. Thank you for being here, Sandeep. No pleasure. Absolutely. So let's start uh, with your comments on the last two decades of your work experience. Yeah, you know, it's been, uh, it's been interesting as I see myself. I'm right in the smack in the middle of my career, having completed 20 years ever since I came out of a B school. Uh, and I fundamentally believe that it's been a journey. Uh, many a times it felt like a bit of a race, and I think a little bit of a course correction when it felt like a race was a good point. And I think if I was to share one element which I've tried to keep as consistent as possible along these two decades, uh, has been to literally play it day by day as opposed to play it a lot by planning. And I feel the 20 years have been a breeze in that sense, also because I think I've just been very, very fortunate to have worked with amazing set of people in my organization and I think many client organizations that I've partnered with. Great. So 16 of those years has been with uh, Aon, right? Yeah, currently running my 17th year with the firm. Wow, great. So a <clears throat> couple of questions come to my mind when you, uh, you know, I heard you now. Uh, one is, so have there been times where you felt uh, you did not give your best on a certain day? And what were those distractions or why did those happen so you could keep those out of the way and continue give, giving your best? So were there any instances come to your mind where you yeah, thought? Yeah, I, I think, I think it is, uh, it's quite unusual to have every day to be a great day. Like for example, even if you look at some of the greatest, uh, and being an Indian, you have to draw an analogy from cricket. Uh, look at a Virat Kohli or a Sachin Tendulkar or anybody like them. They potentially have like three or four matches where they really are at the best out of like 10 that they play. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite the same in your life and quite the same in my life and literally everybody who essentially just comes to work on a daily basis. Because fundamentally, I believe what you do uh, have a lot of externality towards it, right? It is, it is about you finding a lot right. more things right on that day for you to be able to perform at your best. It's mm -hmm. a lot between your years. Uh, like I met up with Shane Watson and I think he very beautifully said that his best innings were never played between the wickets, they were played between his ears. Okay. So in my opinion, the mindset that you have on a particular day depends and decides a lot on the kind of day that you're really gonna have. And you also mentioned that uh, not, you, you, I don't know if you believe uh, in planning now that you made a comment that it's not always, we're not in control of our own plans, right? right. Uh, so do you yet plan? Do you think, uh, is your message out to the younger force who's just coming into the corporate world that take it a bit slow, don't plan. What exactly would be your comments to them as far as planning their career is concerned? Yeah, you know, I would actually say that prepare rather than plan. Okay. Uh, for the simple reason that when you plan and you over plan, you tend to conspire. So I would constantly talk about prepare yourself about your career, about your challenges, about your development, about the newer things that you want to be able to do in life, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to constantly trying to you know, put that jigsaw puzzle in place because you clearly would not have all the parts of that puzzle ever available or known to you. Yeah. Uh, so that becomes a lot more critical, at least from the way I can reflect over the last 20 years for myself. Just in a brief conversation, uh, most of your analogies have been around cricket and now you brought up the Asian Games. And uh, so do you, I know you're passionate about sports and physical activities, so do you relate do, can you connect that with your experience of the corporate world? Yeah, so, you know, I, when, when, I, when I look at sports people uh, and I look at the amount of hard work that they put in, like for somebody to be able to run the 100 meters and get a medal, that's just 100 meters that gets over for Usain Bolt in like 9.58 seconds, right? Uh, but there is maybe over 10,000 hours of effort that goes in. That to me is greatness, the reason I just get massively inspired by what sports people do. So sports to me has been a big influence. And 
one thing that I've realized is uh, whatever we say is what our body and our mind believes in. Okay. And fundamentally, I believe that the human race has never been able to know what the real potential of the human being is. What is greatness as per your definition? When you, when you say when an individual is performing you know, beyond the ordinary, so could you define it in your own ways? You know, um, I think that's a that's a that's a pretty deep and a reflective question in many ways. And uh, if you just hear the word "great" or "greatness" a mm -hmm. uh, few times, you will figure out that most people that you consider are great are the ones who've been able to go beyond just their individual goals. Like, what's important for me to feel satisfied? What's my own target? Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, greatness to me is about helping somebody else achieve much more than what they believe is their potential. In my opinion, the moment you're able to equate greatness and selflessness, in my opinion, they literally end up becoming two sides of the same coin. In your experience, are there stories which come to your mind where, uh, or strategies you implemented, uh, where you were able to influence a group of people, where people went and delivered greatness? So are there like inputs for other leaders or mid-management where they want to create an influence for success. So are there any comments on what you may have done in your past which come to your mind? I think you have to become a lot more personalized because everybody would define growth differently. Yeah. Somebody would say, you know, uh, me having diversity of work is growth for me. Somebody would say me actually earning a lot more than what I'm currently earning is growth for me. Somebody saying, you know, me having to experience different cultures and working on, on client engagements in our kind of a, a organization which takes me from one country to another is how I would essentially define growth because it's somewhere linked to what I, what I personally aspire. Yes. I personally aspire to go and see the world, uh, understand different cultures, work across different teams, and that gives me a big high. Correct. And if I'm able to map your aspiration to how the enterprise can actually benefit by helping you fulfill that. You've got a beautiful, sure. uh, beautiful team out there which is ready to uh, like go on a daily basis. Sometimes the mistake which people make is uh, when you look up to someone as a leader, uh, it kind of uh, stops you from believing that you can reach that level. So if you have some leader in awe, uh, so in your life, uh, who have been those influences and how did you kind of get that belief in you that you can be that leader that at one point of time you looked up to someone else. Yeah. You know, one, I've seen a beautiful transition in the world where I believe that we are moving away from leadership that we were completely in awe of, as you rightly said, to actually believing that person is quite like me. I think leadership is about vulnerability. Uh, leaders are not exceptional individuals. I think they do certain things which is exceptionally better than many others. I've tried to pick my small lessons from literally everybody who, in my opinion, did something which was extraordinary. And you know, it could have been uh, anybody. Uh, it could have been a cab driver who just had a great conversation I could learn something from sure. uh, his story, or it could have been you know, any of my colleagues that I was essentially working with. Mm -hmm. And certainly I've been blessed to have some great managers in life. So Sandeep, it's been two decades and you've achieved success uh, with any benchmark you take. You know, you're the CEO of your organization at this point of time. So what for the next two decades? Where do you aspire to be and what is your path you're charting out for yourself? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't think for the previous two decades my ambition and my purpose was to become a CEO. So uh, I differentiate between who I am from what I do. Okay. Uh, and I still believe there is a lot for me to learn, a lot for me to grow, a lot for me to do. I do believe that maybe I will be fortunate enough to have my next two decades being defined a lot more by a deeper purpose statement. Uh, I'm still reflecting, I'm still trying to evolve what that could really be. Great, so thank you very much for your time. It's been an interesting Pleasure. conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.